Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today, I am so happy to share these cards with you because they're a batch of Happy Mail cards that I whipped up last week and mailed out. And I just thought they were so fun and cheerful and just great uh, inspiration for using what you have and making some, you know, really friendly hello cards to send to your friends and families uh, nowadays when you probably can't visit them in person. I know most of the country is under stay-at-home orders and we're all trying to do our best to stop the spread of the coronavirus. So being able to say hello in a letter is really nice. So I'm starting off by stamping this with some um, Altenew ink and it's their crisp uh, onyx black ink. It's an oil-based ink and um, this flower stamp is also by Altenew. I wanted something that would be big that I could kind of play with some inks and um, you know have some fun coloring. So what I'm using here to stamp on is a sheet of watercolor paper that was 11 by 14 and I cut it into six pieces. And I was originally going to make bookmarks, but then I thought that um, they would be pretty just on a card as an embellishment as well. And it really takes up most of the card front too. So it, you know, does a lot of work there. I'm using these brush pens, which I will be reviewing in a couple weeks by Altenew. They're very similar to the... Um, Jane Davenport mermaid markers, except they have a finer tip. So if you've been looking for something like that, that might uh, fit the bill, but you can use any inks or watercolors or anything, any painty paint that you have that's nice and transparent. So um, definitely use what you have and um, make it work because honestly, we're going to use so many different medias, so many different techniques. I'm going to be using stamps that are really old along with these new ones. And you know, it's, it's all about the expression. It's all about the thought and what you put on the paper and less about the exact products you use. And I think you guys know that by now, if you've been watching my channel, that I like to mix old and new and you can't always find the stuff that I use sometimes. But, um, but it doesn't matter because you can substitute. You could hand draw this with like a micron pen that won't bleed with water-based media. It's all good. Use whatever you have. So what I have there is just a little ceramic dish and I scribbled some of the ink from the pen onto the dish. And, um, added a little bit of water to the flower and that way I can kind of softly blend a little bit more because the colors were pretty strong. And because these are more really honestly of an ink than a watercolor uh, in these pens, they're going to grab the, the paper, they're going to seep in and they're not going to lift up as easily as like a watercolor paint will. So by squeezing some on a palette and then picking it up with some water or adding some water to your paper first, you're going to have a lot easier of a time for blending. The first layer of all these cards here that I'm doing with the markers, I actually did because I'm going to be reviewing these pens in an upcoming video. And as you know, if you've watched any of my reviews, I like to, um, you know, use a product a lot before I give my um, impressions or opinion on them. I don't like these first impression videos because I feel like you can't really tell what a product is capable of when you just take it out of the box and use it one time. So that's why I started making these cards, but I did know that I wanted to be able to do something with them that was a little practical. And, um, and I just thought Happy Mail was the, was the perfect thing and big flowers, big bright colored flowers, so cheerful and fun. I just thought it would you know, just be so nice for that. And it gave me a good opportunity to test out these different colors, see how they mix together, see how the colors work, how cleanly they blend. Um, and they were a lot of fun to use. So I do like to um, layer on my, um, on my cards and my you know, journal pages and sketchbook pages and stuff. So I went for my trusty Prismacolor colored pencils. Now I know they're not the most expensive pencils. They're not the fanciest pencils. They're not the highest rated artist quality pencils, but they're my favorite. I love Prismacolor pencils and they are always at the ready. They're always um, to my right on my desk. No matter where I set my workspace up, my Prismacolors are always there. And I just use them to add a little bit of highlighting, shading, and dimension. So that's another tip for you. No matter what sort of um, markers you might have or paint, you might have. If you have a set of colored pencils, you can add uh, a lot of dimension. Now I'm using up the leftover ink on my palette there just to put some backgrounds in. Um, I don't like to waste and you know it does double duty. It cleans my palette and it you know gives me more media to use. And I know that if I've used these colors in my cards, in these like bookmarky things, I know they're going to match. They're going to look good together because I've already used these colors before. So that's a way that you can harmonize the um, the elements in your card. Just keep using those colors over and over again, water them down, mix them with other things. You're going to kind of have a, um, a theme carrying throughout your, um, your cards when you do that or your paintings, whatever you're creating. And then everything's going to just go together. And the nice thing about this is crossing them between these six different panels that I'm doing is that when I go to make my cards, I don't have to like every card isn't going to be a big ordeal. I'm going to be basically doing the same thing 
um, multiple times, kind of assembly line, and everything's gonna work together pretty well because the colors have all been mixed and mingled on all these different cards. So I don't have to re I don't have to think up a whole new design every time I make a card or a whole new um, you know color scheme that's gonna work every time I make a card. Now on any of these backgrounds where I had a lot of water, I just sprinkled some salt, and that just gives me an interesting texture. I was really curious to see how those inks would do with some salt. Um, they don't react as much as like a traditional watercolor would, but they do give you a little texture. Now this stamp I'm using here, I'm, sta I'm using a, like a gray distress oxide ink. It's just a big script stamp and I believe it's by Stamp Francisco and I've had it for a decade or more. It is just the most wonderful texture stamp it just gives you that little bit of a of a script. I, I just really like it. I use it a lot. I keep it on the wood block and it's super handy. I don't unmount my wood mounted stamps unless they don't stamp well. That's the only time I've taken um, stamps off their wood block. Other than that, they stay on the block. I like them. I like looking at them. I think they're pretty and, um, and I use them more that way. I've even mounted some small unmounted sentiments on Jenga blocks because it was more convenient for me to use them that way. Now I've got this uh, large stamp that I actually got at a, uh, it was given to me, it was a secondhand stamp, but I don't think it was ever used. It's actually a Tim Holtz stamp. I'm not sure what company it was through. Stampers Anonymous, maybe? I'm not sure. But I really like the pen nibs and the little measuring tape on there. I thought that was just kind of an interesting um, kind of a uh, backgroundy element. So I just put a little piece of paper over to cover up the flower so I didn't stamp on that and I just stamped that down on the background. They, these these images don't really have anything to do with each other but they don't clash with each other. I think so I'm using like pen nibs which is like an art supply. I've got a script stamp. I've got a flower. You know really think outside of the box. Make your old stuff with your new stuff to give it the old stuff fresh life and to give the new stuff a little bit of a grounding and a little bit of um, a history and you'll really come up with some cool ideas. Now for the nibs, I'm simply using gel pens, some metallic gel pens and metallic felt tip pens to color them in. Uh, it's a great way to get some use out of those gel pens because if you've never used gel pens, you've probably run into the fact where they go dry after a while. But it's kind of use it or lose it. If you use those gel pens, they're not going to go dry on you. They need to be used. Um, and so it just gives you an, uh, an excuse to get them into the mix and keep them from getting like dried out on you. And I've never been able to successfully revive a gel pen. I get asked that all the time. How do you bring a gel pen back? And I've never been able to do it. Um, I'm adding some highlights with a white paint pen. And this white paint pen is just about had it. I've used it quite a bit. And uh, unfortunately, it's not one that I can refill. But um, a white gel pen, white paint pen, those are great for adding a little bit of uh, highlight to your flowers and just helping them pop off the background a little bit. Um, these brush pens here that I'm using are, uh, there's a few companies that make them. Artix and Ahuhu both have these uh, brush tip gel pens that are very opaque. Uh, not gel pens, they're brush tip like a felt tip pen, but they, they do put out a lot of opaque ink and they're quite inexpensive. Um, those can be found on Amazon if you're interested. Uh, and they do give you a nice reflective opaque look. So you do want to kind of go around the black stamping because you're not going to see through them. You could use like a glitter marker or, or glitter gel pen that's more transparent if you are afraid that you're going to cover up your stamped lines and it bothers you. I think with cards like this, just play and have fun and that playfulness and that cheer that you're feeling as you create will transfer onto the, the recipient. So here I'm stamping some frames. These are old rubber stampede frames. My gosh, I've had these probably 15 years or more, um, just in some basic shapes. And the reason I'm stamping these is because I want to put a sentiment inside them and I know that they'll be very easy to cut out if I use this either by hand or with my scan and cut. I use my scan and cut to cut these out, but they're very easy to cut by hand. Even I can cut them by hand, but you know, I'm lazy and it's quicker and it looks better because I'm not a great hand cutter. I must have missed that day in kindergarten. I don't know. This alphabet stamp was mo probably the most expensive stamp set I ever bought. And I, every time I use it, I, I just say, man, I'm so glad I bought the stamp set. It's a Stampin' Up set and it's called Occasions Alphabet. And I, oh gosh, I got it probably 10 years ago. Maybe not that much. It was, it, I'm sure it's discontinued by now. But I just really like it because Every letter of the alphabet has like a monogram, has like the big letter, and then it's got a nice little sentiment like O is for one, one of a kind, that's you, or X is for extra, that's how special you are. I just love all of the little sentiments in here. It's honestly, there's a sentiment for everything, and it just so happens they fit these little rubber stampede frames perfectly, so I use them together all the time, and they're just, they're just so unique. And honestly, I don't think I know anybody else that actually has a stamp set, so whenever I send a card, I feel like I'm being totally unique, um, but... Man, I just love that. That that was my that would be one of my stamp sets that I would not part with. It's just so useful. 
So I'm just going to score some cardstock. This is the craft cardstock, and I think I got this at Joann's. Um, you know how a lot of the, the big box craft stores now have a super heavyweight cardstock? It's like 110 pound. Um, I really recommend that. I typically prefer the Recollections over the Joann's brand because I feel like the color is just a little bit nicer, and it just feels a little bit more, uh, more sturdy, but they're both pretty good. I haven't tried any other um, big box store brands because, you know, you get... I don't know, 100 sheets in a package, so it lasts you quite a while. But um, I believe this craft was from the Park Lane line from Joann's, and I like it quite a bit. But you do need to score it before you fold it, or it will crack because it's such a thick, um, such a thick cardstock. Now, when you're uh, these uh, stamp here is from Hero Arts. It was a whole set of ribbon stamps, and they have like a, a a sentiment on them. And I gotta be honest, they are kind of tricky because they're on a wood block, so they're hard to see to line up, and they're very detailed. So what I did, I have this little. Um, this little board that I work on when I'm filming and it's got a little lip on it and so I just line the stamp up to the lip and press straight down so it's kind of like I'm using a stamp a jig or something so find something that will help you line up those stamps and don't worry about it being perfect because it's handmade if you want perfect cards you can go to you can go down the hallmark aisle when you're doing your essential grocery shopping and buy some cards that way and that's fine nothing wrong with that but this is like this gives you cheer two ways it gives you the you get joy making the card and you get joy sending the card and then the recipient gets joy opening the card so um so there you have it now i do know there's some controversy out there because there's always controversy there's some controversy of whether or not it's good to send cards at this time but the mail is still being delivered. Um, anybody receiving mail can let it sit in a box on their porch for 24 hours if they're concerned with, you know, coming in contact with anything. I'd say if you're sick, don't send the card. But I think if you're well, there's no harm in it. I mean, that's that's my opinion. I don't want angry hate comments. Um, I have seen some angry, honestly, I've seen angry hate comments on Facebook with people saying that they can't believe that people are so inconsiderate to send greeting cards at this time. And I just don't buy it. I'm sorry. The credit card company is going to send you your credit card bill. The, um, the electric company is going to send you an electric bill. I can't, I don't know. I'm sending cards. I'm going to gladly open any cards I get. I got a lovely card from a neighbor, which I never would have expected in a million years. And I'm so happy about it. By the way, I used some metallic watercolors on the edges there. And I just thought that just gave it such a pretty... Um, such a such a pretty look. I'm off my soapbox now. So to get this technique, I thought it was really pretty. What you do is just take a clear block, you paint some metallic watercolor on there. You can use metallic acrylics too. Just wash your block off good when you're done. That will work just fine. And I'm just stamping it and sliding it on the edge of the cards because you really can't see much of the background, but I think that just gives us such a pretty little effect. And you could also brush the paint on there too. You can fill in by brushing the paint. Um, you know, however you want to do it. I just think it gives you a nice pretty accent and it's very easy to do. Uh, those are the Altenew metallic watercolors, which also will be showing up in a review shortly. Um, I like them. I have noticed the pan has started to rust on the inside though, which had, hadn't happened at the time I recorded my review, but I didn't, I did just notice that, that they're starting to rust a couple weeks into using them. Um, and then I just layered the panel that I had uh, colored on top. I just think it's just nice. It's nothing over the top. You definitely can batch assemble these and they're pretty. Now I cut out my little sentiments as I mentioned before and I'm just gluing them down flat basically. I'm using double-sided tape. You can use whatever you want but the reason for this is that I figure if this card is 100% flat it's going to get to the recipients with no problems. It can be machine canceled. It doesn't have to you know enter you know be interfered with by any human hands because you know that's a concern these days um so other than the mail carrier i i you know it's really not gonna be coming in contact with too many people so i think that it's a wonderful way to brighten somebody's day when we can't see them in person um i don't know about you it's really it's really hard for me to not you know see friends and family during this time i can't imagine folks living alone i think that would be extremely difficult uh but these are strange times, so why not send a little cheer in the mail? I want to thank you so much for watching this today. I do appreciate every thumbs up, every view, every share. It really means the world to me, and um, I hope you liked it. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.